So we got a uh, induction certificate stamp, so yeah, we are all good to go. So here we are, we're at the obsidian place. It's just been, as you can see with all the trees, been freshly logged in the background, hence a hard hat. And also if we have a look up here on the cliff, we've got all the obsidian up here on the cliff and it may fall down on us, so gotta wear a skid lid. So we'll go and have a look and see what's around. We've already walked past heaps of heaps of big chunks. So we'll come over and we got some just over here. We'll come have a look. Turn the camera around. Right, coming down we've got Big chunks. It's my boot for size. So that'd be a 40 odd kilo chunk that bit. So I'm just going to look for something. It's all up in the cliffs, ready to fall out. Down in the road even. So yeah, I'm going to be a bit... Do this big chunk. There'll be a couple of hundred kilo that one. And there's all the slash from the logging. Last time we were here, we went over the over the hills and picking bits of pieces up. But down the Hawks Way, around Napier and uh, north, and there when we had the cyclone come through, all the slash got washed down the hills into the streams took out bridges, made a huge disaster. So, yeah, probably not going to see a lot of this clear feeling going on in the way it is because of that disaster. But we'll go and hey, have a look up there in the hill. You see it glinting? I wonder if I can zoom in. Look at that, look at that. Great big huge boulders of obsidian. This one here is quite unique with the, the pink spiralites in it. So from here, it sort of starts from up the cliff here and it goes for about a hundred meters up that way where we have the pink Spiralites in the obsidian. So I think I'll grab some of that. Could be cool. What do you think? I think I might get this bit here. That'll be 50 kilo, probably.
down there we've got the lake so it's all easy to see without all the trees in the way so we've got some I'm going after flatter bits today so that I'm thinking of scalloping them out and making bowls that's going to be my my plan we've got a bit of a drop off over there somewhere and we've got the water coming out through the culvert then it's just worn this all, eating this all away shows you how quickly the landscape can change with a bit of water Here's a specimen we're going to take home. We've got Charlie coming over with the ute so we can load it in so we don't have to carry it too far. Yeah, let's see if we can lift it. You look like a rigger. I am a rigger. Okay, yeah. Hang on, hey, oh, hey, yeah. hey! Can you just read That's a small one. No, what, just about, what about the big one? Not here, give me a. Damn. Give me a. Wood. This is a little pie. I'll go down and get some native stuff down the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got a boat for here. <laughs> yeah, so we got some stuff here. Got a boot filled up. You can see down here in the boot. So we'll head on home and we'll have a look at the stuff when we get home. So, yeah. We're still starting the car up, so I better jump in or it's a long walk. We'll see you at home. Yeah, so today we're going to get up close and personal with some obsidian. So, normally obsidian is a black igneous rock formed from rhyolite volcanic eruptions so it's been as the uh, lava's come up it's been cooling underground and comes out very viscous very thick and slow moving so it cools cools pretty quickly and there's no crystalline structure formed in it so it's like a volcanic well it is a volcanic glass so what we have we've got this beauty so I'm, I'm not going to lift it much I'll try to avoid lifting it if I can so it's just sitting here in my garden so hence we're getting up close and personal with it so this one here if we zoom in we can see it's got red spirulites so what are these red spirulites that are in it so I found a paper found a paper online from the Turkish Journal of Earth Sciences and that describes how obsidian gets these spirulites in it so over there 
So a lot of people were calling this here Snowflake Obsidian because it looks like Snowflake Obsidian. But technically it is, but it's, it's not because it's formed in a slightly different way. So here's, here's some Snowflake Obsidian. You can see the nice radiating patterns coming in here from the crystals that are formed in it. Whereas this one here, beside it, is some of our spirolithic royal um, obsidian that we get down in the Topo volcanic zone north of Whakamaru. So that's Whakamaru, Tokara, Rotorua, um, Pokotaina, Rotoma, all out that way there you'll find the obsidian that has the white inclusions in it. So some of it's a form of perlite, but what it actually is, from reading in some of the journals and the papers that I've read, is it's crystabolite. So crystabolite, crystabolite. So that's what the crystal is. So what that is, it's silica that has come out of its state as obsidian and reformed as its own mineral. Okay, so, so how do these spirulites form in obsidian? So as, a, as the obsidian is cooling, the silica transforms out of the, the stone, the glass, into its own compound, crystabolite. So the way that happens is, as a stone's cooling, it gases off, it devitrifies, which means it gets rid of water, and as what's left behind, the little vugs and the, the silica in the form of crystabolite, forms in those vugs, creating radiating star-shaped spirulites, which you'll see is in the snowflake obsidian. But this one here is a little bit different because what it does, it fills those vugs with the crystabolite, and so that happens sort of around the 800 degree mark, according to the research in this paper. They've got a little diagram, we'll put it up here. So around the 800 degree mark, the TG, or the glass transition stage, is where the spirulites are formed. Then as it cools down, between the 800 and 600, it's the vitrified, the water's gassed off, leaving the little vugs in the, in the rock. Then as it cools between 600 and 400 degrees, you have the spirulites uh, grow and form in those vugs. Then under, under 400, between 400 and 300 odd degrees, is when, for this red one, the red is because those, that crystallite has oxidised. So it's oxidised and turned red. So if you've seen one of my previous obsidian videos, it shows, I mentioned in there, that the difference between black obsidian and red obsidian isn't due really to the amount of iron in it, because both have the same amount of iron within the obsidian from other studies that I've read. So, but these ones here with the red spirulites in it is from the crystabolite oxidizing. So, they're pretty cool. And um, it was only, this rock was only found within a 100 meter stretch. All the other 
Obsidian was the white spiralites in the rock plane. Because this was a bit different. Which I managed to pick up and put in the back of the ute. As you probably saw. So, yeah. Got to do what you got to do, eh? So, the size of these crystals can vary from the on this one here. They're only sort of a millimetre across. To that one there, which is about 25 mil across. Um, there's no way you can call that snowflake obsidian. So, yeah. So that's the story of our spirulitic obsidian. So it's the oxidation of crystabolite forms the red spirulite red bubbles in the rock. So it's getting a bit uncomfortable here. Be up and close the pistol with my biggest bit of rock I've found to date. So we'll call there today. So if you if you like what you see coming on our journeys, yeah, like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. So we've got some some more coming up, and yeah, I've got a big trip planned this year. So we'll go and. Yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, that's a little bit of a spoiler, spoiler alert. There's a trip coming up. Okay, guys, take it deep. We'll catch you fellas later, and we'll see you on the next one.